Welcome into the Level Up Your Gaming Podcast, Episode 2, KYP. Today we talk about KYP, or knowing your players. We discuss why it's so critical to know your players and why it makes for a better game. If you'd like to leave us feedback, contact us, or even participate by adding your thoughts to the subject, send us an email at levelupyourgamingpodcast at gmail.com. Once again, that's levelupyourgamingpodcast at gmail.com. Now sit back and enjoy the episode. Welcome into the Level Up Your Gaming podcast. My name's Aaron, and across from me is my uh, esteemed colleague, Jared. Hey, everybody. Uh, today, we're going to go ahead and be talking to you about uh, KYP, Know Your Players, okay? Huge. Know your personnel in general, and also know thine self as a GM. Yes. Okay? Oh, my God. This term comes from, uh, from sports in general, and uh, the whole point of KYP is because everything we're going to be talking about is shaping up a game to uh, you know match your players' desires. So the whole point of role playing, and Jared will hit on this a bunch, is it's got to be fun for your players, and it's got to be fun for you. It's got to be fun for all parties involved. I can't specify that enough. It needs to be fun, not just an experience, not just getting together. It has to be a fun experience now that doesn't mean that there aren't aren't supposed to be challenges and i guess i'm just like diving yeah, when, when, I, when i say fun i think what i want to really clarify here is that it shouldn't feel like you're doing this as a chore yes okay? and you shouldn't feel like you're just doing this every week or every other day or however often you game out of like i need to do this because other friends game it's supposed to be fun in the sense that if your story is not well received by your players and the reason why it's not well received by your players is because they're not having fun then your story is not a good story to be telling for your group of players precisely and, and it doesn't mean that it's not a good story it just means it's not a good story for your players yes and knowing your players is 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 the the key to making sure that fun so this is a, a shameless plug for a book if you have not picked it up you need to go out and pick it up um, it's called Robin's Law. It's very short, but very good. It's like, what, 25 pages? Yeah, you, t- you gave it to us one time as like a little pamphlet. Or yeah, like a PDF, and then I like I printed it up, and yeah. it's like, read this. Um, and I, I resisted for a very long time. You are. You know what? I read it. I read it before we started the current set of games that we're doing right now, and it has honestly made me a better storyteller. It, it made me a better storyteller. The moment that I, I read it, um, because there is a section in there about KYP, you know your players. It's, it's a section that encompasses how to analyze. It gives you a tool. And, and that's one of the things I'm always big about. Is give me a tool. Just don't tell me how to do something. Give me a tool. Uh, and Robin's Law gives you that tool to analyze your players Find out what's their play style. Find out what is their emotional game. Yeah, where do they sit on the, you know, power scale? Like, do they play as a power player? Do they play as an agreeable player? Do they, you know, like, do they all like these... maximum crunchiness or do they like talking politics? Yeah, like, I mean, they, what do your characters like going into it? And how does your gaming group's makeup look? Now, if you're running like a one shot con game, you're not going to have this luxury. But if you run a regular game for your players, it is incumbent upon you as the GM to be the person doing this analysis of people. Or if anybody GMs in your group, if you share the responsibility, you really should be doing this because your games will go to the next level. You'll be putting more challenges in their path that they want to experience. Absolutely. You know, and it's, 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 a big thing about that, bringing that to the next level, because when you do that, uh, it, 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 your players are going to notice. Yes. They're, they're going to notice, um, for example, and, and the thing is, don't be afraid when you do the analysis, because when you're going to end that analysis, you're going to go, oh my God, because you're, you're going to find I out. I have a bunch of power gamers. I have a right? bunch of power gamers, <laughs> or I have such a mixed bag that God help me, like um, uh, I ran an analysis on our group. You know, and I look at, I've got one player who is uh, quiet, likes to stay in the background. He loves the intellectual characters. And then I have one of our players is a former United States Marine, and his crunchiness level, 
he needed maximum amount of carnage <coughs> possible. And you sit back and you go, how the heck am I going to make a story that everyone's going to enjoy? It's not going not gonna to happen. And there were, I had that panic moment. And then I had an epiphany. And this is a tool. When you create your games, create moments for each one of your players slash player characters. In our detective game, yes. we've had uh, uh, Aaron's character who played, he played a, uh, a former lawyer, very talk person, uh, empathetic, could figure people out. We had Ken's character who was a former police officer, specifically forensic analysis. And he, he could do the crime scene. And then we had Brian's character, Jim, who was our tracker. Uh, the man could, you know, he understood the forest, he understood the woods. Kind of like your rangers. In every story, now I'm not saying every campaign, I'm saying every story that I was, you know, had the privilege of telling, I made sure that every player had a moment, their moment. And I would encourage you to as shove as many of those moments as you can into that uh, story that you're telling. So you've got your overarching theme. You've got your the story that you want to tell, put together and ready and good. But in the in that you need to find those moments. You've got to find those very specific key moments where it's like, okay, uh, our, our adventurers are going to the tomb of Kafa. Mm -hmm. and I think we've officially named it. I something like that. Okay, <laughs> um, and they're they're going to hunt the dragon. Uh, you've got your cleric. Your, your cleric needs that opportunity to heal something, use his light magic, where he gets to be the shine out. Now, that doesn't mean that the opportunity doesn't exist, because fortunately with Dungeons Dragons, specifically clerics, if there's a combat scene... You're going to probably heal someone. You're going to need that healing moment. But bring him that, that part with the extra special level. Um, you know, is there something that's only inscribed in the languages of... Of of uh, the clerics in 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 five e for example you have all those you know things that are unique to the races themselves uh, such as like you know the dwarves or you know have some innate knowledge of stone masonry or something like that so I, you know if if the race or the the class that you're playing has some innate knowledge try to sprinkle that in somewhere so it's like oh our group which you know you as the gm get to hand wave was tailor-made because it's tailor-made for your game you know get you get to put them in situations that only that like only their character can solve the problem and so they get to feel like they really contributed to the story and this that that's a huge point for i i love that point right there it's a huge point for con game uh storytellers think of making that one character who can in that con game he's gonna get that um he's gonna get that moment he's gonna get the opportunity the only problem would be if if you know the player doesn't notice that yes i'm a dwarf forgot that i was a dwarf but i'm a dwarf i can read that but uh, you get but you as a gm even in a con game there you might be dealing with a lot of people who aren't paying attention at that moment you can call out and be like but listen only a dwarf can read this yeah, you might have to. You might you might have to be like plugging. You might you might have to smack someone with the answer, <laughs> but you know. <laughs> but once they see that, you'll see that twinkle in that eye, and that twinkle in that eye is the payoff. Yes. Oh my god, and it's just the emotional payoff of that. Like I I've seen it in your eye, Aaron. Yeah. I've seen it in Brian's eye. I've seen it in in in, in Ken's eye. Um, I've seen it in everyone's. And in knowing your players was the guide to that, because hmm. once you know your players and you know their emotional payoffs and you look at the characters that they designed, then you can really create those moments. Mm -hmm. um, especially on a week-to-week -week basis, it's mm -hmm. huge. Because then you say every week, like, how am I going to get him mm -hmm. his moment? you got to remember, it's also not just know your characters, know your players. I mean, it's really, really important. I mean, knowing the characters are important, knowing their motivations are really important. But knowing the characters are, is, is so important because, like I said, you got power gamers. And if you're dealing with new people who are new to gaming the likelihood that somebody's going to be a power gamer is like really, really high. Okay. They want to get into freedom. A, yeah. They want to get into a combat. Time. Okay. They want to really express the freedom mm -hmm. that you promised them in the game. Yep. So they're going to say, 
I, I would honestly, you have to definitely focus on putting combat in that game and letting them shine. I don't care if it's puds that you're putting them against. You know, some, <laughs> some really weak enemies, but man, if they could just mow through a bunch of them, they feel like the king of the world, and it really satiates them to allow for those intellectual moments to exist for the other characters. It does, and it, like, you know, exactly. Even, because for a first day character, or first day character, first time player, taking on the the purple bellies of Serenity is a huge accomplishment for them. They they think they're king of the world there. Um, whereas your more experienced players are going to be like, yeah, that, that was a purple belly. But don't, don't, just let everyone know, like, this is the first time player. And if there needs to be a discussion about that prior to game, like, guys, have the discussion just to make sure that everyone's having fun. Um, they're going to have their moment in the sky or moment in the sky, moment in the sun. So yes, knowing your players, uh, analyzing their emotional points. I myself, uh, I, I did a Robin's Law analysis on myself. I think I came in as the tactician. I build plans. You build plans and you build pretty specialized characters around those plans. Oh, God. I... Like if, if you've never read it before, I'm just going to kind of give you a quick hand wave over it. The, the scale goes like this. You've got your power gamer, which is somebody who min-maxes the crap out of their character to accomplish that. I'm sure when you're listening to this, you're going like, you're not, everyone's nodding, going, yep, I know exactly who that is in my group, okay? Yep. And then you've got yourself the specialist, okay, who is really, really strong at doing this really, really specific <laughs> thing, okay? They're not very good at anything else, but man, they're really, really strong at doing <laughs> this very, very specific thing. And right now you're going, yep, I know who that is, okay? And then there's this other player over here, and, and then you start moving to the more analytical side of things. So you've got the player who likes to talk, and you've got the player... Actually, I forgot the other two, because the other two are pretty amenable to all situations, except the for the... The storyteller is one of them, isn't it? Uh, I think there's somebody who's really focused in on the story yeah. in general, and so like you have to have a story in your game. But the the problem is that is that the the two that I mentioned, the the power gamer and the specialist, do not mix well with the two analytical versions. Okay, it's very very hard. But the two analytical versions tend to mix better in a game that is more focused with for the power gamer. So it, it's it's really like I said, if you don't know what type of gamer or players you've got, you have a problem just in the fact that you're going to try to design a game because because you you had you you yourself as a GM have a tendency to want to design games in a specific way. Yes. So, I mean, like one of the things that you're going to do is you're going to say, I want to tell a story that's like this, and it's got a bunch of puzzles and stuff, and you've got a bunch of power gamers in your group, and that story isn't a great story. It doesn't. Okay? The, you, the Scion game that you told for everybody. Oh, okay? You actually made that sort of a puzzly game, but these puzzles were like dead simple, and everything was like combat, combat, combat. Yeah. But the, the group loved it. Well, the majority of the group, um, you know, uh, loved it. Uh, that got ahead of you there. Help me keep my sanity. It was not our regular gaming group, but uh, yeah, no, they they like their crunchy. But uh, no, it's 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 pivotal to to look at that and and to bring your story, the overall arc, into how your characters are are playing. Exactly like you said, if if Aaron had developed a game regarding. Uh, puzzles. He's lost me. I I'm I'm not that quick when I I can barely finish a crossword. Mm. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Um, however, uh, he knows because uh, I have my uh, degree in history. Mm. The minute that he puts a historical fact. Oh yeah, I, I know. I know something about you. I put a historical fact in there. Oh, oh you love God. it. You you just dig into it. You're like, ah, oh, just like give me more of that. Dog on a stake. <laughs> just. <laughs> I'll, I'll lick the blood off the plate. You know, there'll be nothing left. Um, <laughs> so uh, players personally, it's a, what interests them. Uh, Aaron knows for me, it's it's history. Mm -hmm. Oh man, oh man, I, I will. I want to know your fantasy history. Yes, tell me more of this story. For me personally, it's a good mystery. It's oh, a good. God. I, I mean, I love the mystery. I love the story. I, I mean, I, I despise having a game that does not have some sort of payoff at the end of it with the story, which is why, like, a sandbox game, which is what a lot of people like yep. to run, 
is not a great game for me because no. it doesn't have a payoff at the end of it. It's like, do what you want to do, which is fun, but I'm like, I kind of want to see, like, I, I, you have to give your players the ability to play, which is something that, you, yep. that you've you talked about a lot, uh, you know, to me um, prior to this. And aside from that, like, you know, playing, you also have to have something that they are trying to accomplish at the end of this. Because the game has to come to an end, whether it's your Chronicle Ends or yep. this chapter of the Chronicle Ends. It's like a book. That you're that you're reading so the play is everything is the meat of the book but the start and the finish those are you've got to get me there at some point exactly and in and, and having that end and having that payoff is huge for you but i mean shoot i put a door labeled do not enter with you and brian you're gone no nope, yeah, we're, we're salivating we're we're spending all day trying to figure out how to get gone. inside that door <laughs> I, could, I could have puppies on the other side of that door you wouldn't care it's just i need to get through that goddamn door <laughs> when the the payoff could even be very simple uh so knowing your uh players little little funny things uh little little quirks um you know because I will tell you this, and this is, a, I, I guess, a cautionary tale for uh, players, or not players, storytellers, uh, or GMs or dungeon masters, um, is if your players don't get their emotional payoff, don't get their time to shine, they will create their own, and it will not jive with what you're trying to build. Yeah, you it ever want not... to see a game go nuclear? Just what? Just go ahead. Don't give them their time to shine. They will create it, and they will create it the least opportune time. And and the ones that are, that are going to be the, the the problem child when you get to that point is going to be your power gamers. Oh God. Okay. Because they because their 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 focus is combat. So if you have not provided and satiated enough combat, I think Jared's general rule is one combat. One combat. One combat per night. It can be a real short thing. It doesn't even, it doesn't even have to be a gunfight. It can mm -hmm. be a scuffle. It could be a couple of shoves and a okay, man, I'm cool. Yeah, one fight per night, and then those players get their they just like mm, they, you you you've at least satisfied that part of them so that they'll go along with the group because there's the promise of more. Exactly, because combat overall is is exceedingly satisfying yes it's very satisfying it's dark it's, hearts out there are like yes it it <laughs> it takes the longest to do in a game oh god but it is very very satisfying in if for out for all players really involved but for your power gamers they're gonna feel super satisfied because you can throw super strong challenges in front of them mm -hmm. and they're gonna rip through them oh god yes and then and, and your power gamers will love you for it um and don't, because I know for me, I had a strong time reconciling that. Oh man, I'm I'm just playing to the crowd. Yes, you are playing to the crowd. People don't make movies that people don't want to go see. That that that's the point, though. I mean, like that's why you also have to kind of know yourself too. Exactly. If you if you as a GM want to tell this story, it's going to be a story of political intrigue and all this stuff. Like you ha and you have a bunch of power gamers. That story is never going to work. That story's now, never going to work. We're going to take some real fancy dancing. Okay. That build. story is never going to work if that story never has combat involved in it. However, yeah. if you have power gamers, okay, and you sprinkle in a bunch of combat in on top of all the political intrigue, the players are really going to enjoy the game, and they're going to go along with the parts that they don't really like because you have promised them more. Exactly. The first it is free. Yes. And the other thing, too, is that you also have to remember that you as a G, like, yes, you are telling a story that you want to tell, but how the players get to that, the end of that story is not up to you. Not up to you. The, the power or the necessity of agency. Yes. Of player agency is, is, is key. Um, as storytellers, we, we, we want to design and we want to create, we want to create these scenes, but the player has to be the agent. Because um, if the player be. feels like they get there, they, the player is going to be invested with you the whole way. Okay, all players will feel like they are there the whole way, and if they get to have their moments to shine, like you mentioned, then you end up with, you know, you end up with a great game. At the end of the night, if people are talking about your game, at the end of the day, whenever you do game, I don't know if yep. you do it in the day or night, but when, at the end of your session, Breakfast if game. if the players are brunch game, uh, <laughs> brunch game. if they, 
<laughs> if the players are, are are doing, you know, are talking about it and going like, like, oh man, I can't believe, like, you know, like th- that guy was a dragon the whole time, the like, whole freaking time, <laughs> like, you know, and, and they're like, like, what's what's next? And they're trying to theorize and, and, and think about what you're doing next. And you just kind of sit there and you're like, yes, yes. And that's also like the best time to sit there and be like, I didn't think about that in your head. And you're like, oh my oh, I'm god, bring that steal in. from your players. Your players are some of your players, especially if you're a storyteller like I am. Um, let their imaginations create the game. Oh, let their imaginations <laughs> create. Like, there have been so many times that Aaron or Brian or Ken have said something, and I was like, did not think of that, totally stealing that. You know, um, they're, they're their own worst enemies when it comes to their paranoia. Because hmm. um, I, I remember this one particular scene I had created. It was actually th- this group was benign, uh, not benign, uh, benevolent. It was uh, the Heritage Foundation. It was in a, set in a uh, at a Native American reservation, and this Heritage Foundation uh, was really all about the, the heritage. All I had to do was put an NPC's name on there that the players had been dealing with and had put a whole lot of trust in, and also another NPC that they didn't trust. And suddenly their minds went racing that the entire town was against them. It was. Fantastic. Had I intended that? Absolutely not. Did I let that sucker roll? You're darn right I did. Made for great, great oh, scene God. building. We trusted no one. The trust tree. I mean, it's... <laughs> it started the trust tree. Are you in the tree or are you not? And nobody was in the tree. Let's nobody put it that way. But again, it's it's just it's so important to know about your players because again, like if you if you don't know what they're looking for in turn brought the great point about, you know, letting them have their moment to shine. If they have their moment to shine, they feel like they contributed to the story. And when they feel like they contributed to the story, they're going to just walk with your game to the end of it. They're going to feel like 100%, like they've just gotten a bite of that apple, and they're going to be more willing to go along with the things that you need them to do to get them to the end of the story. And, and that's great, because um, that brings me to my next point, um, which is uh, gauging the fun. It is, it, it's, it's really difficult to uh, gauge the fun. And I think you've actually kind of provided a couple of examples earlier of how to gauge the fun. Are people talking about it at the end? Mm-hmm. Um, seek out that, that feedback. Seek out that, that construct, that criticism. Are you guys having fun? Is everyone, you know, and if you get a groan when you end the session, like, oh my God, like, how could you end it there? Like, <laughs> then you, 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 you don't need to ask. Just take that sucker and run. Um, you know, and it's it's gauging their fun because some points they need to go through. This, every game has uh, times that you go through the doldrums. The, the, the players in a mystery are just, they're spinning their wheels. Your combat, they, they killed everyone who's a baddie within the 100-mile radius. They're on a spaceship floating through the empty portion of space. Uh, several ways that you can deal with that. Um, one, uh, interject that um, that action artificially if you have to. It sometimes might not even be connected to the actual story. Uh, the best example that I can think of, just off the top of my head, you know, they're 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 going through space. They're through 600, you know, million miles away from the nearest planet. Uh, they're they're trying to deliver the, the some sort of power drive. What happens? Pirates, boom, out of nowhere. I don't know how they got on the radar. There ain't supposed to be anybody in this portion of space, but guess what? The pirates arrived. It is the interjection of, and it, it reminds me of a game that Aaron once told of, uh, we were waiting for this monster to pop out, and instead a wolf popped out. No matter where you are, there is a threat in this universe. Mm-hmm. Medical conditions pop out out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Interject that action. And that's great for your clerics. Mm-hmm. And I, I can't push this enough on, on storytellers, GMs, and dungeon masters. Mm-hmm. People get heart attacks. They have bad cholesterol. Mm-hmm. And for the love of God, if you have a player that can't make it that night, what better thing to do than they ate something that your cleric, they need to heal. They need to provide those those immediate life-saving things. Mm-hmm. The, the, the fighters got to go to the cave to get the charcoal or mm-hmm. this that's going to heal that player. That player's out for the night. They might be a little ticked at you that you use them. 
You used them, but you know what? You used them for the greater good. Yes. So interjecting that action, sometimes artificially, sometimes the accidental thing that happens, because the world is strange. And if your crunchiness is low and your players need that crunchy, artificially inject it. Mistaken identities. <laughs> Man, sorry that we, you know, emptied buckets of brass into your mm -hmm. hero's hideout. We thought you were a rival gang. Sorry about that. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole point of it is, you know, nobody really knows, you know, what your plan is except for you as the GM, DM, you know. Like, Basically. nobody nobody knows, okay? So, like, you don't have to tell them, like, you guys screwed it all up. Like, no, you can change it on the fly. Like, that's the brilliance of being the DM. That's why you have the board, so you can cheat and lie. Okay? <laughs> we all know what we do behind that screen. We are fudging rolls left and right. Let us all just admit that to ourselves. Never to they they don't need to know what the armor class is that you're trying to penetrate. Absolutely. They don't need to know that. Okay. Oh, they're, they're they're not rolling quite high enough. Like, oh, maybe they suddenly went down. Like, nobody needs to know that. How many times that I have faked rolled a one? I can't count on my hands. You know, you, will I ever tell my players when I've done it? Absolutely not. You don't want your ass being handed to you by some like level one like 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 thugs, and you're like you're like, man, these level one thugs are way stronger than I thought they'd be. Like, oh, time to wake him up a little bit. Like, uh, uh, shoot. Oh, oh dear, they only did one damage. He's just not hitting right now. Like, oh god, you you can you can make you can you you can get away with a bunch of things. Again, like I said, you, just like you said, you can inject fun anywhere that needs to be injected, injected, and your players are none the wiser. And, and, and the best part is, I, I guarantee you this: go back to a game that you had that was really successful, and remember a time that maybe you have changed something on the fly to make things work. Yeah. Okay. If you tell your players, by the way, I did this in that game. They might go, really? You did you you just you just made that up out of the fly? It's like I thought we did that ourselves. Like no, no, no. I, I had to give it to you because you guys were like a Swiss it. watch. I'll, I'll, the good example of that I have is in the last or like a couple games ago, I ran the investigation game. Ken was doing something, and and you guys like ended up going a completely different route than I thought you were going to go because you know why not and and then i was like i was like oh you know i need i need to give them the answer so they can get back to the to yep. the other guy like i hadn't thought that through and so i'm like well uh time to inject this person into this scene like why would he be there nobody questioned why he was there okay and then i just gave you the answer at the end of it to get you to the next step so like like and when i told him that i just gave him the answer he's like really i thought we like we earned that and I'm like, no, no, you didn't. <laughs> no. it's all a lie. <laughs> and I mean, like that is just—it's huge that interjecting of fun and interjecting of the situation that brings fun to your players. You know, those specific situations that really hit them. Uh, another thing is sometimes fun in the moment is not always. Sometimes you're going to bring that situation that the players don't expect to be fun, but it turns out to be a whole lot. Don't be afraid to experiment. Yeah, again, you've got to let your players have the fun. Yes. I mean, so if your players are having a blast doing something, you might have to, again, this is this might not be super exciting for you as a GM or a DM or something, but you've got to sit there and you kind of got to let them have their fun. Like, let them enjoy the joke. Let them enjoy the the yes. situation they're in. Oh, my okay? God. Because yes. the more you let them do that, again, the more they'll they'll feel like they can trust you to take them to the next place. Yes, uh, and building that that trust is huge. And using that as currency, you know, that 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 letting them have the laugh and yes. letting them have that time is is huge. So with uh knowing your players, um also know which ones are going to not how do I say this in a, in a polite the ones that are going to go way off the beaten path, the love of going way off the beaten path. There are players out there, and we all experience them. The ones that do things just to tick off the storyteller. Yeah. Know that one. What is his objective? To tick you off. So, or to shock and awe you. Mm -hmm. You can look at it in one respect. He's doing it to, to tick me off. He, he likes ruining stories, and he thinks that it's funny. Or two, 
he's trying to create his own level of fun. Yeah, I mean, if his fun is strictly to tick you off, I mean, what you do is you sort of let them do some of the things they're doing, okay? And you kind of politely nudge that, oh, if you continue to do this, bad things are going to happen, okay? Yeah. And then you let them do it, and then maybe you throw, like, a minor consequence in front of them, like, see, bad things have started to happen. Yep. And then you throw in a really big consequence, which is like, sorry, I gotta frag your character, your character gets thrown in jail, you know, something crazy like that. Like, I'm big. The, the, the world has consequences. It takes them out of the game, uh, you know, because the world has consequences, just like you said. <laughs> it's full of consequences. Um, you know, and so... Knowing that player and knowing their emotional payoff and, and your disruptive players, uh, what I'm going to encourage storytellers is to dive into the more closely tool. Um, have that have that talk with them. Uh, not the serious talk, and I, I've heard it from many other uh, role playing podcasts of, dude, you're you're kind of destroying my game. Let's let's have a talk about it. I mean, a talk of like, what do you want in a game? Let them tell you their wants, their desires, the players that you can't analyze, that you can't figure out on your own, sometimes you might have to have that discussion with them of, what are you looking for? Mm -hmm. what, what, what kind of game do you want to play in? And that can bring a huge amount of insight. Huge amount. Look at their other things. Just like we talked about how I am, I am a history nut. Well, what's the wonder what the other things they like doing? Well, they love Star Wars. All right. Let's talk about Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about maybe a Star Wars game. And let's see where they go with that. Mm -hmm. Let's see where they go with that. So, you know, when it, when, it, when it comes down to knowing your players, this is your key. Everything's a key. I, I know. This is one of your keys. Key, key one of 10,000. Key go. one of 10,000. <laughs> um, knowing those players, being able to provide those moments of fun and enjoyment is 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 crucial but the other thing that i always want to uh kind of press upon uh dms gms storytellers st asts is uh is something that aaron taught me not too long ago uh i was creating a game uh and i was not having any fun doing it mm -hmm. and knowing yourself is a huge thing i was miserable creating this game it was like a job for you it, it was worse than my job. I actually kind of like my job. Um, <laughs> I was building a game that I did not want to story tell. And Aaron stopped me and said, are you having any fun making this game? And I was brutally honest. I was like, absolutely not. Not, not in the slightest. And Aaron said, then we shouldn't do it. Don't create a game. Don't story tell a game simply out of the need to storytell or create a game. Find an alternative solution. Develop a, develop a method that will find a different path. Yeah, just go to the well, do some one shots, do something else. If you just if you really want a game, but you don't want to you know you just can't develop that chronicle, go that route. Do some pre-gens, do some one shots some easy combat stuff. Absolutely. Those are very easy, light, fun. But if you can't, or I mean, if you you don't want to take an extended time off there, uh, you know, like that's what you can do. But otherwise, you know, take a week off. You know, go, go to the well, you know, just relax. Don't feel like you need to create something. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, or have the game session, but don't game. Just talk to your players. Hey, what are you guys looking for? What do you want? Like, you know, like, you know, what, what kind of game do we want to put together there? Again, it, it's all about knowing yourself and knowing what your players want, and ultimately that's going to create and lead to better games. It's, it's gonna, it's gonna level up that game. It's gonna Boom! Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Hashtag shameless plug. Well, this has been a great discussion here. Tonight, Absolutely. Um, but uh, we're gonna talk to you guys later next week. Uh, we'll have way more content coming out here soon. So, oh yeah. So stay tuned. All right. All right. For, take uh, care, for Jared, I'm Aaron. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.